How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today is going to be a lot of fun. Now we're not going to have any Lambos or Bentleys or Supras or Ferraris. No exotics of any kind. In fact, I'm going the complete opposite direction and I bought a minivan for next to nothing and it's been abandoned for almost four years and I'm going to try to get it running in the next 24 hours. Also, this van was on Pimp My Ride. I probably should have started with that. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it. Consider subscribing if this is the sort of thing you like to see. Now, I have no idea what this even is, but I knew I had to have it when I saw it listed in Boston on Auto Tempest for $850. Now this, if you guys don't know, is a 1999 Dodge Caravan. And you guys have probably seen this around in your local mall or parking lot or literally anywhere because they made a lot of these cars. But this one, as you can tell, is a little bit special. I decided to team up with Advanced Auto Parts to rebuild this thing and restore it in about 24 hours. So if you guys aren't familiar with the insanely popular early 2000s MTV show, Pimp My Ride, it's basically where they took these derelict, trashed, wrecked cars and they made them into these show cars that were, well, let's just say of questionable taste. This van was featured in an episode in 2004, but it actually wasn't the car they started out with. See, a little secret that they probably don't want you to know is the fact that a lot of times they didn't use the original car. They got cars that looked kind of like it, and then they modified those because the original cars were in really bad shape. So in the show, the original van was a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager Expresso, and you can actually see the guys at the shop taking the van apart and basically junking it. I mean, they rip open the doors, they take the windows off, they smash everything. But what the show didn't tell you is they got a really good condition 1999 Dodge Caravan with low miles that they could modify pretty easily. But a few years after the show was over, the van exchange changed owners a few times and it ended up in a Boston mechanics yard and it sat there for the better part of four years, literally rotting into the ground. Now you guys might've seen the Jalopnik or the Drive articles about this van and why somebody should pick it up and why nobody actually did. And that's where I come in. Now this is, uh, it's a little bit worse for, okay, that's uh, really dirty. Can I have some gloves? Thank you. And we are Good. Now, this has a ton of mold on the side, but I think it'll probably clean up fairly well. Now, I have no idea where this came from. It literally just sat outside for four years in the elements. This is an interesting way of attaching a windshield wiper, uh, having no wiper at all. So hopefully I didn't gouge the windshield. So we're just gonna leave that up. This is a I actually don't know what body kit this is. I believe it's an Arabuni or something, but I couldn't find this body kit. So I think we're gonna have to repair this. This is all just fiberglass. Also, these headlights are, um, let's just say they need to be restored. They're not, they're not great. Now coming over to the side, you see how big this van is. This is a seven passenger or more van. I don't know how many passengers there are. I don't know much about this van, but this van was actually famous for being one of the first vans to have doors on either side. See, in the mid nineties, you can only get a door, a sliding door on one side. And here you had it on both. Unfortunately, uh, you, you can't really get in this door because it's full of, um, full of stuff for the show. It's a bunch of wires and let's hope that that's not a fire hazard even though, oh, that's a spider. But coming back here is where things sort of start to make sense. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, a little bit different from uh, what grandma had, don't you think? So this is a completely custom fiberglass enclosure. It has some subwoofers, some speakers, amps, and four monitors. But what's interesting about this is that I don't think any of this works. But here is where the magic happens and where I'm guessing a lot of magic did happen because uh, yeah, this side skirt is held on by like one or two screws and zero screws. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think people were using it as a, as a stand and you really shouldn't do that with this because it was only held on by screws and fiberglass. Also, I can't open this door because 
there's no door handles. The door handles have been shaved. I have no idea why. Let me try to open it up. <laughs> All right, and I can't open the door. So, uh, good. I think we should probably go inside and see what's in there, but I'm definitely gonna need a face mask. All right, let's do it. All right, now I'm ready to check out my brand new car. This is just a precaution, nothing to worry about. Check this out, it is nice and minty fresh, guys. Well, uh, the seats were redone in denim, and they're actually not in bad shape other than having some sun damage and some questionable stains. These definitely will need to be cleaned up, and that's uh, okay. If you come back here, you can see that there's phone books and stuff. I, I don't know why that would be a thing in the age of Google, but oh, look at that. We have the color matched wheels. We have some other wheels and tires. The tires actually don't look too bad. Probably gonna end up changing those, but we got, is that a trailer? Okay. And also a wraparound couch back there, all made in denim. None of this actually works because when I, should probably need the keys, right? That cannot be the key. Okay, that's the key, but check this out. So you wanna be a player, but your wheels ain't. All right, moment of truth. Three, two, one. Uh, okay. I saw that the lights went on before, but now it's just... All right, um... Battery box time? Yeah, can you put the battery box on it? Do you need, do you need what? Gloves, respirator. No, you're, you're fine. You sure? Yeah, you're good. Just don't touch anything too long. Have you seen in here? Uh, no, but I mean, should be fine. You know there's no drive belt. Probably in there somewhere, dude. You know the alternator doesn't turn. Okay, so... <laughs> Let me see what's going on here. There's oil in there. Yeah. That's a, there's oil in that engine. And it's not milkshakey, which is good. The drive belt's missing. Yeah, and uh, your tensioner probably shouldn't sound like that. That's, that's good. It just needs a little lube. And then that does not turn. What, the alternator's supposed to turn? Yeah. Oh, and it doesn't? There's not a, really any electrical demand in the car, so. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's not like there's 5,000 watts of amplifiers. Okay. Um, um, power steering. Oh, that, that does turn. Okay, power steering turns. But it's covered in oil. That's fine. What about down there? That's the AC compressor? Yeah, AC compressor. That turns, it's a little. Uh, a little noisy. A uh, little grunchy. That's, that's always good for your. Whoa, what's that? that? That's another idler pulley for the serpentine belt. Ooh. Should be nice and quiet. Well, it, it would be quiet if we, we're in the car and we were listening to lots right. and lots of loud music. That, that's, well, at least the water pump is turning smooth. Let's take a look at the uh, radiator. Let's let's see if there's any coolant in there or... Um, oh, okay, uh, so there's no coolant in there. About halfway down. About halfway down there is coolant in there. But we might actually just have a leaky cap, as rotten as that rubber is. Mm-hmm. And as loose as the the cat parts are, it may just have been pushing out because it was bad. So you know what we should probably do? We should make a uh, list of things that we need to get from advance. Do you have that much paper? I actually don't know. I'm gonna start it mainly because I need to know if this has some engine damage or something. This is van first start attempt. Let's do it. Woo! Whoa, dude! I did not expect that. Dude, this thing's running pretty good. I mean, it's a little it's a little bit lumpy, but for something that has no drive belt. It I sounds mean, really good out here. These are normally a ticky motor and it's nice and quiet, so there may be hope. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a rev. Oh, that's that's hanging a bit. <laughs> that's but that's not bad. Okay, I don't want to run it for too long without a water pump. But dude, that's that's awesome. That's potentially a little less work on it. We'll uh, we'll see, we'll get it a little Potentially work. a little less work. I don't like your attitude. Let's see what we can get done here because there's power going through here. We have show, we have neon, TFD, I don't know what that is. Foot and door. Let's see if show does something. Okay, light came on the dash and relays are clicking. Whoa! What sort of 2004 sorcery is this? Neon. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
That <laughs> oh boy, that is amazing. So there's like a little neon light show. Not even a Maybach has this. Oh, you're missing the best part. Look further to your right. Oh, wow. I'm not sure I like all the red flashing lights while you're driving. Well, yeah, that, I mean, if that goes into your eyes, that's probably not great. Let's see what else it does. Let's turn that off. Conserve battery. TFD. Let's try this. Something's moving. Okay, uh, that's something down there. Don't know what that is. And foot does nothing. And the last one is door. Now, this is the only way I think we can open the door. It makes sense, right? Let's... Oh, no way, dude. That works. <laughs> I guess power doors before every van has power doors. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, Pimp My Ride was pioneering the way. Okay, all right, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the other, I'm gonna get over there and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna take all this out and we're gonna see what's in this van. So Jared is behind the camera for this episode of Automotive Archaeology. I am like really, really excited because I get to go through other people's stuff. Guys, take a look at this floor. There's, there's like a plexiglass opening and I'm guessing the neons went underneath here. So there's a big false floor. Is it a dance floor? It might, it might be a dance floor. Also a remote control for something. We have Rubber mallet, uh, other stuff, and a crowbar because, uh, well, let's, you know, let's be honest, it was in Boston. Is this, does this go on? I, I don't think they go together, but what, it, what's in them? I, I, what is, what is in here? I, I hope it's not like a dead animal or something. Okay. Okay. Then, oh, whoa. Oh. I really thought that was like a dead animal. Why don't you climb into your new van? Oh, all right, uh, let's do that. There's a big sort of, ooh, that's heavy. So this is the best that 2004 could come up with as far as LCD technology. Uh, so, oh, you know what this was? This was the footrest. The, oh. Yeah, this was, a, so when this car was made, they had this big footrest right here and it would come up and it was motorized. Oh yeah, so this is this is the footrest motor. I think this is what was making that noise before. Oh, so if we put it back together. It could work. We could have a footrest again. And this looks like the plexiglass for the footrest. This is the jewelry making station um, because the original owner, I guess she was into jewelry. And also there's these monitors that's supposed to be drop down. <laughs> They're a little, bit, <laughs> a little, little wiggle, a little bit on the wiggly side. Uh, this entire panel is a little on the wiggly side. Dude, credit where credit is due. Like the the work that went into this, it's actually not bad. So in '99, like power doors today on a van is nothing. In 1999, it was a big deal, and like the mechanism that they put together to to make the door work. Also, a wraparound couch with seat belts. I don't know how you would. I think it's like this, but you're almost sitting sideways. So how, how does this see, oh, there's there's roaches in here. So um, <laughs> so I think this smells horrible. How does, wow, how, how does sunglasses smell bad? Yeah, as I was gonna say, how does plastic how smell bad? How does plastic bad? absorb odor? So this car is gonna need a lot of cleaning and a lot of mechanical components, but honestly, I think we could probably get this working. What do you think? Oh yeah. Let's make a big list and let's uh, go over to advance and I'm sorry, those, gla those glasses are just amazing. What's wrong with my glasses? Can you not take me seriously? Welcome to the very first episode of Shopping with Jared. And uh, Jared, you got a list. We, we have a little bit of a list for that van here. Did, did so. you check it twice? What's the first thing on that list? Uh, the first thing we're coming across, some washer fluid. All right. We need that. We might need a bigger part. Yeah, I, th I think we're gonna, we're gonna need like at least 10 of these. So this is cleaning supplies. Do they have any biohazard supplies? Right. Headlight restoration kit? That. Uh, looking. 
We, Ooh. Need, we need one of the ones with the sanding. This is a sanding buffing kit. So okay, we'll let's try. do that. All right, interior. Boom. And boom. Yeah. So we need a uh, two inch turn down. Yeah, there we go. And then a clamp. A clamp. So those, are those boxes. This 1.7 uh, two, two inch. Right. Two inch pipe right there. We're gonna need four of these. Actually, why don't we get the chrome ones? Oh. Extra fancy. Brake fluid. Boom. Some dot three. Power, Power steering. steering. How much do you think we'll need of this? Uh, probably two. Because we're going to be opening the system up. I think our little cart is getting full. Well, you know, it, it's going to get a lot more full when I... You can put that down, though. It's full. All right, so uh, we got a lot of um, a lot of parts. Uh, so it's a 99 uh, Dodge Caravan. 3.3 uh, liter. V6. Let's do a uh, coolant temp sensor. Then we have uh, valve cover gaskets. And if you have like the the intake manifold valve cover gasket kits, they sometimes mm -hmm. sell. Power steering pump. We need the pump. Well, Power steering going. pump? That's what you said. Let's be safe and do it. There's oil all over it. Do we need it? I mean, it's... We can not do it and just stop leak it. Well, okay, let's, let's have it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. All right, in the interest of time, uh, we got everything and it's it's actually insane because they had everything in stock. So uh, you need to go and get all this stuff. <laughs> Is there anything I can help with? I can go, go help oh, you get it. In the back, I'm just gonna be a few minutes getting everything. Okay, all right, I'll just, uh, I'll just chill here. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. That is a... Uh, that's a receipt. That's a receipt. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got that, and then we got that. That's that's a lot. All right, we gotta we gotta cart this out to the car. And this isn't everything. We have more coming. No, that's true. Yeah, we do, we do have more coming. All this for a van. <laughs> it's dark outside. <laughs> that's how much stuff we got. All right, so that's a that's a full car, dude. Thank you so much, man. Not a problem, guys. We really yeah, appreciate you. Y'all have a great night. Awesome. You too. Woo. Okay, finally back in the shop, and the van actually looks a little bit more dirty than we left it. Well, this van should be looking pretty good in short order. So we got all our parts over there. We're gonna go over that in the next episode. But right now, I wanna get this thing stripped down, and I wanna get it a little bit cleaned up, at least all that mold off. I want to get the wheels off. I want to get all the body panels and all that stuff to be off because uh, that's going to go to the body shop to have them hopefully redo some of this cosmetic damage in time. Let's get to work. And we're done. Look at how good it looks. Actually, it looks really sad. Yeah, it's amazing how much cheap fiberglass side skirts can make a car. Yeah, a this van look kind of cool. <laughs> this is a uh, oof. All right, so for any of you wondering what a pimp my ride car looks like under the skin, it's just 
regular car skin. It's just literally stock underneath and they painted right over all the molding. And as you can see, it's just double-sided taped into place. There were a lot of self-tapping screws, but all in all, it actually wasn't hard to take apart. That yeah, wasn't too bad. We had some rust, but that's not the car's fault. That's just- Yeah, it's just Boston. What's pleasantly surprising is this one spot you wiped a little bit Yeah. versus not wiped. I mean, it. I think it cleans up pretty nice. I mean, it, it's impressive. And that's just wiping the scum, not washing yet. Yeah. So here she is, 3.3 liter V6 with how many horsepower? 117. This is gonna need a lot of work, but I think she runs okay. So we're gonna be replacing all the stuff over here. We're gonna have the alternator replaced, uh, the water pump, power steering pump, all the pulleys, the belts, the hoses right here. We're going to uh, recharge the AC. We're gonna see if it actually takes a recharge and fix all the stuff like the leaking valve cover and do the air filter. But my absolute favorite part of this entire deconstruction are the brakes, especially this one. Now, you might not notice too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a worn brake rotor. That's nothing to write home about, except for when you go over here. Wow, okay, so there is like a very, very big lip right down there. It looks like it was just metal on metal, and you can see how worn down <laughs> this is. This is so not safe. I'm not sure how this was even driven like this. I mean, this must have made a, an incredible noise. Oh yeah, when you run out of pad and start grinding metal to metal, it sounds horrendous and you drive it for quite a while to be able to burn it down that much. So one of the things I wanted to tackle was the underside of this car. Now this car has been sitting for four years and it's been sitting up north and I wanted to see if this is actually okay or not and I wager that it is. And dude, this looks, this looks great. This looks really good. There's not an inch of rust anywhere. I mean, there's a little bit on stuff like the exhaust up here. But other than that, I mean, this is, this is looking really, really nice. And it didn't look like it was in the Northeast for a long time. It actually looked like somewhat of a California car. One of the few things I guess uh, Dodge got right was their corrosion protection. Yeah. This year. Oh right. yeah. I mean, it, it looks, I'm not going to say it looks brand new, but it looks very, very serviceable. It doesn't look like anything's going to give us too much of an issue, but I don't want to jinx myself. I've done that. Yeah, we've, we've had that happen a few times. Yeah, I've done that enough. So tomorrow morning, I'm taking this to the body shop so they can work on it, but then I'm gonna come back because Jared's gonna be working on this engine and I can't wait to have this thing purring and have this whole thing as a awesome road trip car and, and an awesome gift for somebody maybe, I don't know. We'll get it running good, back on the ground, and then we'll try to uh, get the uh, TVs working so we can have some entertainment for the drive. Jared, you're not supposed to say that you can watch TV while you're driving. I'm not. Whoever's in the back is. Ah, uh, right. Not the front monitor. Mm -hmm. The other three. The, the other nine monitors in the back. The, the other seven, eight monitor, however many TVs are in there. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Uh, so, uh, Jared uh, pressed the button and uh, that fired into life. Uh, so, I am. I am very, very excited now. So we might have an actual footrest that works. Okay. So, oh, yes, yes. So, <laughs> oh, everything works in this van. 